Hi there, my name is Chuck Durfee, and I'm going to be walking you through the bowling game Code Kata today. Uh, we're going to be using C Sharp and Link, Language Integrated Query, which comes with the .NET framework. Uh, this particular Kata is, uh, or I should say, was developed by Robert C. Martin to teach test-driven development in it while you're developing a score for a game of bowling. Uh, before you, you're taking a look at Xamarin Studio, which is my favorite IDE on a Mac when I'm doing .NET development, but uh, you can certainly use Visual Studio if you happen to be on a Windows machine. This particular kata starts out with a blank slate. Um, for uh, ease of getting this video going, well, I've created two classes, the game test class and the game class, but as you can see, both of them don't have any uh, material in them. So. Uh, we are starting from a blank state slate. I just ran this particular test that has no implementation to make sure that the unit test framework is working correctly, and end unit did what it needed to do, so we're in good shape there. Test-driven development is all about using unit tests in order to drive design decisions. So when I'm creating this score for a bowling game, I want to use my tests to cause me to flesh out functionality in this particular score, which I'm going to call a, a game class. So here in game test, I want to write a test that's going to cause me to create a game class. So let's go ahead and do that. The simplest possible game of bowling would be where you just roll the ball down the gutter every single time. So that's the first test that I'm going to write. And uh, it looks something like this assert r equal. Uh, if you don't knock down any pins, you get no score. And so I want this thing to look like game dot, I'm oh, sorry, I want lowercase game dot, mm -hmm, game dot score. Boy, it is persistent and helping me out, isn't it? So you'll notice right away that there are two items here that I haven't created yet, game and score. When you're doing test-driven development, you often write code in your tests that is what you wish existed already, and then you make your wishes come true. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, create a field variable here called game. That'll get game to compile, and then I'm going to get score to compile, and uh, Xamarin doesn't offer you the capability of automatically generating a missing method, so I'm going to have to go over here and do it manually. Uh, let's see here, I want this to be a public. I wanted to return an integer, which is the score, and it doesn't require any arguments. And here I have to return something, so I'm just going to return the default value for an integer. So now, uh, if we take a look at this, uh, we can go ahead and run this test, and of course it's going to fail because I have an initialized game, so I should get a null reference exception, which I did. Excellent. So when you do test-driven development, you go through the cycle over and over again. And it's all about building up confidence in your code. You want to write a test that fails in a predictable way. That's, uh, as you can see, red. And then you want to write some code to make that test pass, which is green. And then when you have all your tests factor, or sorry, when you have all your tests passing, you're welcome to refactor. You're welcome to restructure your code, either to make it more succinct or to set yourself up for future functionality, address some other non-functional requirement, what have you. So we're currently in the red portion of the red-green refactor loop, as it's often called. Uh, so let's make this test pass. Uh, the easiest way to make this particular test pass is not to change the game class per se, but actually to change the test to go ahead and instantiate a copy of that game class, as I mentioned before. There you go. When you're doing test-driven development, it's important to understand whether your test is an error or whether the program is an error. In this particular case, the test was an error because I wasn't setting up the situation properly. Let's go ahead and now create the second test. What's the next most simple thing I could do? Well, let's knock down some pins. Uh, let's do a single pin game where I knock down one pin in each try. In bowling, there are 10 frames. You get two tries each, so this should be 20 at the end of the day. If I run this particular test, well, of course, I haven't told the game class that I'm actually doing that, so before I go and run this thing, let's go ahead and set that up. So I said I wanted 
20 times. So I just created a simple loop. I'm going to use the C-sharp convention that you can omit braces for single line uh, code, mainly because the Xamarin Studio isn't inserting those for me automatically. So it's a lot more typing and returning, and I want to focus on showing you how this particular kata works. So uh, here I want to type game roll one, where one is the number of pins. And uh, as you can see, there is no implementation for that over here, so I better create one public. And this one can be void. I don't have to return anything from this method. And this is just going to be the number of pins. And uh, here I don't have to put anything at all for it to compile, so I won't. Uh, I want to get to a point where I can run my tests as fast as I can. Sure enough, this thing does indeed fail. It says was zero. And that makes sense because I'm not actually doing anything in the role method. Let's go ahead and implement some functionality now that I have a failing test to make the test pass. Just like with the Java example, the easiest way to do that is just to create an accumulator variable and to use it. And now, if we run both of these, everything should run fine. Okay. So far, I haven't had to deviate from the traditional classic implementation of this using Java, but I do want to highlight the capabilities of Link here, and this next test that I write is definitely going to cause me to do that. Uh, let's go ahead and copy this guy. I'm doing some cutting and pasting to save time, but in general I don't recommend doing that because there's uh, too much chance of cut and paste error when that occurs. What is a spare? Well, a spare is when you take two tries during a particular frame to knock down all ten pins, and in that situation, while well, you get to count the next bowl, ball that you roll twice. So uh, I'm going to just say maybe the first time I knock down uh, five pins, and then the next time I also roll five pins. So that uh, qualifies as a spare. Spare. And then uh, in the next uh, time, uh, I only knock down two pins. What would I expect the result to be? I would expect it to be 10 plus 2, and then I get to count that 2 twice, so 14 total. Let's go ahead and... Oh, uh, I'm implying here, of course, that uh, I rolled gutters the rest of the game. So let's give this a shot. Um, sure enough, spare fails because I haven't taught it about that special scoring rule. Expect 14, but was 32. What in the world happened here? When you're writing unit tests, it's really important to make sure that none of the unit tests depend on each other, that they're all isolated. And I didn't do that. If you remember up in the beginning, in order to get the gutter game to pass, why well, I just created a new game here. So I'm using this game throughout the entire test suite. That's a bad plan. Uh, so I want to create a new game for every test. And the way that you do that is by using a setup variable, like so. Oops, excuse me like so. So I'm going to put this game method here in, in this guy. Sorry, I need to copy this out into a field, get rid of this so that I'm not initializing a copy inside setup, and life is good. Um, and just for completeness, to make sure, I'm going to take tear down here, tear down, and I'm going to make game null here, so uh, game equals null. Great. Now let's go ahead and give this thing a shot. And it fails in the same predictable way. You notice that I just uh, violated the rule that I said earlier where you shouldn't try to refactor um, when you have broken tests. But in this case, we were refactoring the game test class itself, so I felt pretty confident that we were okay. Um, expected 14, but was 12, and the reason for that is it didn't count this 2 twice. So that's, it failed for the reason I expected. So now let's go ahead and implement some functionality for the spare. Now we're going to be highlighting link today, so it stands to reason that we're going to be using some sort of collection in order to store our data, and today we're going to be using a list. Uh, whoops fault. Oh, yeah, I mentioned the rule and then I failed to follow it. We're going to do some refactoring here, so I want to comment out spare uh, game. 
let's see here. So list, int, and I'm going to call this thing a results, and that's going to equal a new list. Like so. Uh, I already have uh, collections generic in my namespace uh, declaration up here, so uh, there's no compilers there. What does this piece look like uh, for the two test cases we already have working, the single pin and the gutter game? Um, let's see. Uh, instead of doing this, I want to do list dot or sorry uh, results dot add. I just want to add a new uh, value to my list that's equal to pins, and then down here I can do results um, sum. So here's the first difference that we have from the Java implementation. In the Java implementation, why we went through a loop and we wrote an accumulator variable and uh, went through the entire array of values. Here, um, I could use an array for this at this point, but here we're using the link method called sum to do all that work for us. So this should pass the two tests that are currently active. Oh, um, and they do, and I got a compile warning that says that sum is never used. So let's just get rid of sum. All right, let's uh, turn this test back on, so to speak, and try again. And it should fail the same way. To do suspected 10 was, or 14 was 12. All right, so we're in good shape there. How, um, in order to implement spares, uh, because I need to have two balls that are in the same frame, I need to have a concept of a frame here somewhere. So let's uh, go ahead and do that. Uh, I want my code to look something like the uh, not there. <laughs> my fault. Uh, I want my code to look something like this here two frames sum uh, and uh, what, how do I do that? Let's do that part first. So uh, I want to write an extension variable or sorry an extension method um, extensions and the signature of this thing is going to be public Static. I'll leave that for a second. Two frames, and I need to use this to make it an extension method. And I want this thing to operate on any sequence of values, which I'm just going to call list. What would the return method of two, or sorry, the return uh, value be of two frames? Well, if I think of all of the bowling scores I have, and I'm going to be putting them into pairs, why I want a sequence of sequences of numbers. And in C sharp, that would be an I enumerable of I enumerable of of int, like so. How in the world do I write such a method? Well, I need to write uh, yield return. So yield is a special keyword in C-sharp that is used in um, contexts like this where you're returning an, an iteratable value. Um, what yield return does, or I should say what the compiler does with yield return is it turns it into a, uh, an internal iterator class and allows you not to have to write all that boilerplate code. So the first thing that I want this method to return is the first two arguments of the list and then I have to figure out how to get at the rest of the list. Uh, so I would love to be able to do something like this, yield return list skip two, like so, but that's not gonna quite do it. Uh, this would be a, uh, equivalent to just returning the list. I'm not doing any processing at all. Uh, so I wanna be able to break the rest of the list up into frames as well. If I try to compile this though, I'm gonna run into trouble because frames returns an enumerable of an enumerable event, and um, all I, and I, sorry, the, the enumerable part is already taken care of. So everything that I yield return in this list needs to be of type I enumerable of int. So what this looks like is for each of our frame in 
this statement yield return frame. And I'm letting the compiler I'm letting the compiler figure out what uh, type frame is here. We're still in a strongly typed C sharp land, but um, the compiler can infer what that type is, so I don't need to type it. Uh, in this particular case, it would be an enumerable int. Well, does this work? Let's take a look. My apologies. I don't know why that popped up. Uh, type. Well, I just came up with a big compile error here. It does not contain sum. Oh, sure. I enumerable of I enumerable of int doesn't know what sum means. So I'm going to need to sum the contents of each individual, um, sorry, of each individual I enumerable of int separately. So what I can do for that is uh, use lambda here to do that. So what does that mean? Well, I'm taking, I'm taking each frame and I'm turning it into the sum of what's in that frame, and then I'm going to total all those together. So that's what I'm accomplishing here. Does this run? As you can see, I've entered an infinite loop. I'm going to go ahead and stop this particular test. If you take a look at the uh, implementation of this, there's nothing here that's going to stop me from yield returning anything. So I need some place to stop stuff. The simplest way to handle this, I think, would be just to simply take the first 10 frames that the, I end up with. Because in bowling, you have 10 frames. It's always 10 frames. So let's go ahead and take that as an approach. And there we go. One could make the argument now that I'm perverting the list class and I really should be thinking about creating my own custom class. I'm going to go ahead and implement the rest of this kata without creating a frame class and then perhaps record a separate video where I go and refactor this thing to have just a frame. So now I have an implementation that works for the first two test cases and this is still failing in the same way. So I haven't made any change, or I haven't made any breaking changes, I should say, but I still haven't implemented what spare would be. What's different about spares? Well, it's the way they're scored. To implement spare, what I'd like to be able to do is to type this. Is spare, uh, well, list, is spare, Um, else yield return this and if it's a spare I want to yield return list take three I want to take the two items in the original frame and the ball from the next frame as well uh, let's go ahead and implement actually I want to put parentheses here to make that a method and not a property let's go ahead and implement this guy public Static. Uh, is spare returns a Boolean value? Is spare and uh, spare and uh, this I enumerable of int list. Is that right? No. Yes. Um, yeah, because I enumerable and list, so we're still good. And how do you implement this particular method? Well, you say return list dot take two dot sum, so the sum of the two, next two balls in the sequence. If that's equal to 10, then I've got a spare. Does this work? Ding! Everything's green. Excellent. So this implementation works okay for spares. Let's move on and create a strike. Test. I talk to myself when I when I type sometimes, especially when I'm coding. So this is a strike, and then uh, I need two other balls. Doesn't matter what they are. I always try to make my data come out in such a way that nothing will coincidentally pass. 
So I want to make sure that the results of this uh, cert r equals is different every single time. In this particular case, 1 and 6 is 7, doubled is 14, and 10 is 24. So that's what I expect. I also expect this test to fail when I run it. Okay, and it does. Um, I only got 17. It didn't count those two twice. Perfect. How do I alter this method in order to take strikes into account? Well, uh, I'm going to need an is strike method, so let's start there. Is strike. And the only difference here would be list take one sum. That's a little bit of overkill. I'm taking the first item in the list and I'm summing it, which is just returning it, right? So let's uh, go ahead and just, instead of take one, let's just return the first item in the list and leave it at that. Where do I need to implement that? Well, there are two differences here. One is um, that um, I do need to take the next two balls when I get a strike, so I can actually take three here, so that part's okay. List is strike, like so, so that part's okay. But down here, I don't want to skip two balls because a frame for a strike only has one ball. So you'll notice that there are two ways that this particular method changes. It changes in the number that it takes and it changes in the number it skips. So let's move that logic into a method. Yeah, see, you're not helping me out. I don't know Xamarin Studio as well as maybe I could. I don't see a refactory menu here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do it the old fashioned way. Let's go ahead and comment this out. And I want to yield return list dot take frame. All right, um, I'm just going to copy this so I can keep the structure. Take frame, and that part's all okay. And then I need this logic here to live in here. And actually, uh, when I say take frame. I'm returning an I enumerable of T. Um, nope. <laughs> uh, that certainly did not do what I expected it to do. That's what I was trying to accomplish. Okay, so we have take frame, is strike, is spare, take three, take two. So far so good? Okay. And then here, I want to now create a skip frame method in analogy to this one. I'll do that down here like this. And I want to say skip frame. And what does skip frame return? Well, most of the time it returns this. But sometimes, in the case of a strike, it returns something else. If list is strike, uh, sorry, I just started creating stuff that I don't need. Uh, return list dot take one, like so. I don't particularly get bothered by Actually, uh, looking at this, I don't need yield return here, although that'll still end up working. I don't, I'm not bothered by multiple uh, returns out of a method. Maybe you are. Oh, uh, take is bad. Skip is good. There we go. So what I could do is um, I could refactor this so that I only have one return out of methods. But as I said, not a big deal to me. Let's see if this works. Oh, this worked terribly poorly. What do we have here? Invalid operation sequence contains no elements. Well, sure, it's entirely possible that I might be uh, 
not doing that. Because if you take a look at the way the game test is, um, in some situations I'm filling in the entire frame for bowling, but in some situations I'm not. So uh, it's important to me that uh, I always have a full game. How do I want to handle that? Well, I want to handle that in the score method. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to concat this thing with new int 21. What does this do? Well, the concat method takes two sequences and puts them together. So essentially what I'm doing with this particular method is I'm saying I want all of the I want all the scores that you've given me so far, and then I'm going to assume gutters the rest of the game. The reason that works is that when you initialize an array in C Sharp, why it initializes it with zero values, so I don't have to go through a loop and initialize those. This is a little clunky. I don't like this being here. So I'm going to go ahead and create myself another static method right here. Uh, public static innumerable of t uh, end game this innumerable of t list and here I'm going to return list dot this oh shoot one too many this and then here I'm going to say end game like so so at least my game class isn't so bad. Now what happens? Everything but strike passes. What did I do wrong in strike? Expected 24, but was 23. Expected 24, but was 23. Um, I wrote this whole skip frame method, but I never used it. So I was always taking two, skip frame. Let's see if that works. Ding! Everything's green. Test-driven development is a lot like this. You try a solution to a problem, maybe it doesn't work, you either tweak that solution and try again, or maybe you back out and try a different approach. As long as you're making really small changes, it's easy to back up into a state that works. Um, if you're doing something larger than just handling two classes, I highly recommend using something like a version control system and doing frequent check-ins locally. Uh, I use Git quite a bit for this, and then uh, I can do a git rebase on my local repository to squish it all down into one comment. Or one commit, I should say. Okay, so we have all of this working. And then test public void perfect game, which is the last test case that I'm interested in. Uh, here I want to do an array again, or sorry, a loop again. I less than 12, I plus plus, um, and this is going to be game dot roll 10. So a perfect game is when you roll 12 strikes in a row, because uh, you have 10 frames, right? So there's the 10, and then the rules of bowling say that in that last frame, well, you can go ahead and bowl out um, a first, a second, and a third try. And whatever you get in those, you get to keep. So it turns out that when you do all the math there, while well, you end up with a perfect game of 300, does this test pass? Yes. So here we have completed the bowling game kata for C Sharp. As you can see, this particular implementation is completely different than the implementation that we saw in the Java case. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope to see you soon.